Hi. In the last video, we've seen how we can create arpeggios that outline the entire mode where we're playing in by stacking thirds on top of the root of the modal tonic chord. Now, this resulted in a 13 arpeggio. Now we've also seen that we could split this arpeggio into uh, smaller chunks of seven chords to establish exact the, same, uh, the exact same result. Now in this video, I want to show you some other common and less common approaches uh, used by guitarists all over the world. Now many approaches revolve around adding a characteristic note for a certain mode to an existing arpeggio to create a modal sound. So say we are uh, in the Lydian mode, where the raised fourth degree is the modal trigger note. It's a characteristic note for this mode, as you may or may not know. Well, in this case, we would add that raised no fourth, uh, fourth note uh, from the scale to the triad arpeggio of the tonic chord. So, for example, uh, in C Lydian, uh, the characteristic note for this mode is the F sharp, which is the raised fourth note in the C Lydian scale. Now, we could just add that specific note to uh, our C major triad, and there it is, the genuine lifting Lydian sound of which filmmakers across the globe are so extremely fond of. Uh, now let's do a very short recap of these characteristic notes for the modes of the major scale. The modes of the major scale are the Ionian mode, the Dorian mode, Phrygian mode, Lydian mode, Mixolydian mode, the Aeolian mode, and the Locrian mode. Now this shouldn't be news for you. Uh, if this is a revelation, then you might want to dive into the modes to get a thorough understanding of this beautiful concept first. The Ionian mode. The characteristic note in the Ionian mode is hard to tell, because this mode is the source of all other modes. If we have to pick a characteristic note, it would be the combination of the perfect 4th and the major 7th. By the way, the interval created by the 4th and the 7th degree, the 7th and B, is a tritone. Now, in every mode, the tritone contains the characteristic note, as I explained in part 1 of this visual essay about modal arpeggios. The Dorian mode, which is the second mode of the major scale, is best described as a minor scale with a raised 6th degree. Now, the sound is sad, but creates a hopeful feeling caused by the raised 6th degree. The Phrygian mode is the third mode of the major scale and is characterized by the flattened 2nd degree. It can be designated as a minor scale with a lower 2nd degree, which makes this mode a dark sounding mode, often used in rock. And, uh, and flamenco music. Although the latter uses more often the variant of the Phrygian scale, the so-called Phrygian dominant scale or dominant Phrygian scale. Now the Lydian scale is the uplifting and sometimes dreamy sounding fourth mode of the major scale. It's the brightest scale of all the modes, caused by the raised, uh, raised fourth degree in the scale. Well, it's often used in, for film scores and in instrumental rock music. The Mixolydian scale is the fifth mode and has a flattened seventh degree, which is the characteristic note in this darker sounding major scale, and is used extensively in blues and rock orientated music. Now, the beautiful uh, Aeolian mode has been used many, many, many times in pop music and is often called the natural minor uh, scale or short the minor scale. Now, the flattened sixth in combination with the major uh, second degree is probably what it sets apart from the other minor modes. The Locrian mode, the seventh mode of the major scale, is a mode with plenty of character. It's the only mode with a diminished triad on the first degree. And this, and the flattened second degree, makes this mode pretty dissonant and strange sounding. So with this all said and done, let's put this to practice. Now the most obvious approach to create an alternative method for playing modal arpeggios opposed to the 13 chords we saw in the first video is adding the characteristic note of the mode to the major or minor triad, uh, depending on the mode we're targeting. So when improvising um, in the, let's say, E Dorian mode or an E minor chord, we can add the characteristic raised sixth to the E minor triad arpeggio. Now the raised sixth note in E Dorian is the note C sharp, and this is the minor triad arpeggio containing merely the root, the minor third and perfect fifth. Now we can add the note C-sharp to this arpeggio to create an E-Dorian flavored minor arpeggio like this. 
Well, it's as simple as that. The only thing you should know is the specific note that triggers the modal sound. Now let's do another one by exploring the E of Phrygian arpeggio based on the triad arpeggio. Now we know that the Phrygian note is minor scale with a flattened second degree. So we take an E minor triad arpeggio as a starting point. The flattened second degree in the E Phrygian note is the note F. Now let's add this note to our E minor arpeggio to create a Phrygian flavored E minor arpeggio. Now you can imagine that we can do the same for every mode. The E Lydian mode, the fourth mode of the B major scale, has a raised fourth degree, which is the note A sharp. Now if we add this to the major triad, uh, then we end up with an arpeggio uh, like this. A lovely Lydian sound, right? E mix Lydian is the fifth mode of the A major scale and has a typical flattened seventh degree, the note D. Now let's add this to the E major triad arpeggio. And by the way, this is of course the dominant 7 arpeggio. The E minor triad arpeggio can be enriched with the 6th degree from the Aeolian scale to outline that intense Aeolian minor sound. Uh, this is the E minor arpeggio. This is the same arpeggio with an addition of the characteristic, characteristic flattened 6 degree the note C in the A Aeolian mode. Now to create a Locrian sounding arpeggio, we cannot use the minor or major arpeggio anymore because the 5th degree in Locrian is a diminished note. And at the same time the flattened 2nd degree is also a characteristic note. So to create a E Locrian arpeggio based on a triad, we have to play the E diminished arpeggio with an addition of that flattened 2nd degree to note F, like this. Now maybe you've seen my tutorial about using one shape for multiple arpeggios. Well, we could take uh, this idea by the hand to create a modal variant. It's a very straightforward idea, and let me explain the basics very short. Now, say you want to play a major 7 arpeggio. Now, we could make an easy to play pattern on the two upper strings containing the notes of the chord. Now, transpose this pattern over the octave. And then again on the last two strings. Now, this is exactly what a pianist would do. Now, let's use this approach for the modes. For D Dorian, we can add the note B to the D minor uh, arpeggio using uh, the two string shape. Now, we can transpose this over the next octave and again over the next octave. It sounds like this over a D minor 13 chord. Now for the Frisian mode, it's best to adapt the E minor triad to an E sus4 chord, for technical reasons, but still outlines the E Frisian sound. Although we're missing the minor third. Now, now we can add the, char the characteristic flattened second degree, the note F in this case, while maintaining a convenient fingering. We can expand this pattern over the next two octaves, as you can see right here. And it sounds like this. In the Lydian mode, we can play exactly the same pattern as we did in the Phrygian mode, starting on the major 7th of, let's say, a C major 7 chord, like this, B, C, E and F sharp. It's a C major 7 arpeggio, where we replace the not very meaningful 5th with the characteristic raised 4th degree, the F sharp. This arpeggio looks and sounds like this. You can also play the Lydian arpeggio with a more advanced fingering by adding the raised fourth degree to the major triad like this, C, E, F sharp, G. And repeat this over the next octaves. Now let's look at the C mix of Lydian mode. In C mix Lydian we just have to play a C dominant 7 arpeggio to outline this mode, because the minor 7, the note B flat in this case, is the characteristic note in this mode. The pattern goes like this, C, E, G and B flat. The 
E minor 7 arpeggio will do over the E Aeolian mode, but uh, we also can add the minor 6 to the minor triad to get that real Aeolian sound. In fact, we have now created a C major 7 arpeggio, which sounds pretty Aeolian over a E minor chord. Uh, and the E Locrian mode, we can outline the four note pattern of a E half diminished chord starting on the minor seventh, like this. Now, the last approach to creating modal sounding arpeggios is the way guitarist Tim Miller plays his remarkable and innovative phrases by applying his 2 1 2 1 system. It all comes down to playing arpeggios with two notes on one string and the other one on the adjacent string, the other string. I thought you should know about this, so I will explain it here, but do check out Tim Miller's um, music and explanation of his own system, and especially the hybrid picking technique he uses is worth checking out. And I've put some links in the description. In this video, I show you two finger fingerings of Tim Miller's piano-like arpeggio approach. And the first one goes like this, and you can project this on every scale. The second one is a more compressed version and goes like this. Now this is almost a symmetrical fingering, but it can be adapted to suit your needs, of course. Now say you want to apply this system to create a C mixolydian sounding arpeggio. We needed the notes that outline the C mixolydian mode, which is at least the characteristic note, and any other color tone is welcome, of course. In this case, you could apply the wide 2 1 2 1 arpeggio uh, to the root position of the C mixolydian mode. And we're playing here the notes C, D, A, B flat, C, G, A, and E. So, what we're playing here is a C dominant 9 13 chord C, E, G, B flat, D, and A. And this chord is associated with the Mixolydian mode. And we can also apply this, uh, you can also apply the more condensed arpeggio that spans only three frets, but with the same systematic idea, like this. And with this, we have played the C dominant 13 chord with the notes C, G, B flat, D, F, and A. And this is a typical Mixolydian chord. Let's do this for the Dorian notes too. We could apply this 2 1 2 1 shape in this way. We're playing the notes A, B, F sharp, Dorian trigger note, G, A, E, and again the note E, the note F sharp, and the note B. Now, for the last example, uh, let's take the popular Lydian mode. Also, for this mode, uh, you can uh, play a beautiful Tim Miller style arpeggio. Let's do the C Lydian mode. This is the fourth mode of the G major scale, and it contains the notes C, D, E, F sharp, the Lydian trigger note, G, A, and B. Now, if we play a condensed version, we could do this. Now we have played all the notes from the C Lydian scale. But well, there's also a wider version which sounds different. This arpeggio starts with the major 7 chord and adds the F sharp on the 3rd string. So you see, this way of playing has a lot of potential uh, for creating super awesome sounds in any mode. Now in this video and in part 1 of this series you have seen that there are lots of possibilities to play arpeggios and especially the modal ones. Well, they can sound really good and create an evolved sound when used in an improvisation. Now, if you are creative you can come up with your own variations and don't hesitate to share them here with the others so everyone can profit uh, from your creativity. Now for now I want to thank you for watching this video. If it was fun um, please uh, like or comment and spread the word to anyone who can benefit from these videos. So, greets from the Netherlands and I see you later.